Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Breen Madden uh, from Intel and Paul Stevens from Advantech. Gentlemen, great to see you both again. It's been a while, longer for you, Paul and Breen, but good to see you. Can we talk about, begin, Paul, by asking you about yesterday Advantech made an announcement. What was it about and why is it important to 5G? The announcement we made yesterday, uh, Martin, was uh, about Advantech's new systems uh, that have been verified for Intel Select Solutions uh, for NFVI. And what's important about that is it provides some pre-tested, integrated uh, solutions that communication service providers can pick up on knowing that they've been fully tested and verified by Intel for uh, throughput performance levels uh, and also for virtual machine performance. Free. What does, what does that mean for Intel? Tell us some background to, to this. Yeah, so super excited to be here today. Um, we launched Intel Select Solutions last year, Martin, if you remember, and, and we did it to solve some industry problems. Um, number one, it's around choice. We want our operators and comm service providers to, to be able to define and design uh, solutions based on the most optimized and verified configuration. Um, and within Intel, we, we've taken the best of breed of compute, storage, and network, um, and then the software that sits on top of that, and, and we've created reference architectures. And then um, our, our community takes those reference architectures and, and builds solutions based upon them. And this is really good for the operators because it, they, they then have a brand of, of choice and a brand of quality where they say that this solution is, is, is the solution that I want and I want to go and define. It's great for our community and I'm, I'm really, really excited that Avantech have launched their commercial, uh, commercially available uh, version of the NFVI solution, because at this moment in time in their industry, that's exactly what's needed, right? Which is a really strong offering from the community to serve NFVI. For areas like next generation central office, for instance, that you're hearing an awful lot about at the show today. Okay, thank you. Can we move into 5G more generally for, for a while? Um, Paul, when do you see a rollout of 5G technology, you think, in real life use cases. Is it going to happen pretty soon? There's been a lot of talk about it. it's always it's the here, it's there. Yeah. Are we there well, yet? Well, I think most people are anticipating a, a, a real rollout uh, around the 2020 uh, road mark. I think we're going to see a lot of active trials there which have already started and, and we're here at this show of some, uh, some rollouts as well. Um, but I think that what we're trying to put together here, uh, Brian, is, is some solutions that grease the skids really on deploying 5G network infrastructure and the ability to do that on white box servers that have been pre-qualified are going to save a lot of time and effort uh, on, on the communication service provider's perspective. Okay, Brian, what about you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. It's a question that everybody's asking, you know, when, when is 5G going to roll out? But we've been actively involved with, uh, with the community on, on, on field trials, really live trials um, this year. Um, and we're going to see some further announcements towards the end of the year around, around, around rollouts, which is really exciting. Um, what what, what you, you must remember about 5G is that it's not just about the modem, it's not just about the device. Um, the, the 5G RAN needs to be optimized, for sure. Um, but you can't do that without an optimized network. And if a virtualized network and a network that is very agile and flexible, where those services can be positioned where they're needed most to take advantage of the low latency and the high bandwidth, et cetera, that 5G brings. So we've been working across the RAN community, but also as well across the infrastructure community to really, really bring it, coalesce it together and bring it together and, and work as a community to, to, to start rolling out these use cases. Um, we're hearing an awful lot about media being a very, very strong use case for 5G. I, I firmly believe that the enterprise community in general um, will define and drive a lot of the, the, the rollouts, if you will, from a business perspective. And we're seeing an awful lot of traction and having conversations with a lot of enterprise verticals at the moment about how they can adopt 5G and really embrace it as a technology going forward as well. How about you, Paul? What, what do, you, do, you, do you see what's happening? And again, we've been talking earlier on today about the difference between virtualization and cloudification. And, and the discussion was about whether or not you need a, virtual, a fully virtualized network for 5G or you want that which is cloudified but not necessarily completely virtual. Do you agree with that? And is that a way towards 5G? Yeah, I think that's one of the necessary ways forward. I mean, that's that's needed really uh, to open the door to 5G and, and the, the flexibility and elasticity that brings it is the key. Um, so I think we need to achieve that. I think we're well on the road to, to, to getting there. You mentioned media, Reen. What about other use cases that are going to lead the way first, deploy first? Where's the, where do you see another big market opportunity in the pretty immediate future? 
uh, I, uh, on our on our on our stand at 5G World this week, we're we're showing a a, um, a, a demo from um, Intel and the company called Skydome, which is about first responders. And, and if you think about first responders, right, they're kind of a really important function within a smart city. Um, and when you look at what 5G can bring uh, and making that service that they offer more optimized, and if say you have a, a crash in the freeway or the motorway. Uh, you want to get your first responders there as quickly as possible. So to be able to take the best of immersive media, the best of the network infrastructure technology and virtualization, plus as you said Paul, the cloud economics, right? You know, bringing those cloud technologies right to your doorstep means that um, operators can look at services that are really needed within a smart city, right? And optimize those services today for the 5G future. What about challenges? We've talked the upside. What about the downside? Is there one, and if so, is it particularly difficult to surmount. What are the challenges out there that need to be overcome fairly quickly to realize the benefits of 5G as we anticipate them to be? Yeah, I, I, for, from my perspective, I, I, see, I see the key challenge is that we have a very established industry, you know, and a really strong performing industry that has to embrace a new way of, of developing business models, for instance. Um, you mentioned earlier on about, about cloud, and, and a cloud-ready, or 5G-ready network, I believe is, 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 is intertwined. Um, for that to happen, the, the comm service providers need to look at the IT business models, right? Where we have gone through these different transitions already in cloud over the past 10 years, and in enterprise over the past 10 years. And you have to be very agile when you look at your business models, because at the end of the day, it's all about service deployment and service monetization. And that's a non-traditional way of going about our business, right? So that's a big challenge. But I think it's an opportunity for the industry. It's an opportunity for not just this industry, but the broader industries that work together, like cloud, for instance, and as I mentioned earlier on, our enterprise community, and working with, 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 with customers like Advantech, who understand the, these, how you develop these agile rollouts of, of infrastructure, if you will. And once that happens, I think you'll see a, a, a big growth in service deployment, uh, and, more, and more view of monetization of those services, and then development of new services. And I also believe that at the same time, the developer community, where where inherently in the, in the cloud business, they're very, very strong players, right? Where they develop apps and services for cloud, the telco industry needs to embrace that model as well. And it's going to be very exciting times going forward, Paul. I don't know what you, what you yeah, think. Yeah, no, I think so. Um, really, we're seeing so much convergence now in the ICT industry. There was still a little bit of separation between IT and communications, but really we can see it coming together. Um, and, and a lot of that's also being driven by new applications in areas like IoT. So we're now looking more at how we really go from the sensor to the gateway to the edge cloud and the cloud. So putting, stringing that all together for end-to-end -end solutions is really, really important. You know, there's a lot of proof of concept tests that have, that, that have been uh, applied over the last year or two in many different industries. And I can think of one which is, is transfer, transportation, for example, where some of those use cases have been proven, but now we've got to get them to the next next level of the business case. And those are one of the challenges, I think, that, that are important to take 5G to the next level. There are investors and system integrators in the industry now ready to help move industry forward and actually put some financing on the table to make that happen. And I think that if we can calculate those returns on investment and we can really see the clean business case, then really there's no why, reason why we shouldn't be accelerating into 5G full steam. Can we finish off? We're going to be running out of time pretty soon, but I'd just like to have a word from you about MEC, MEC, Multi-Access Edge Computing. You hear these terms banded around a lot. What do you actually mean by multi-access in, in these circumstances, when people just took, trot the terminology out? Well, we, we started off with mobile uh, edge computing. We did. Like I think it was Charlie Ashton that uh, once said, you don't have to change your T-shirt, it's now multi-axis edge <laughs> computing. Um, but from, from that perspective, and I think we've, you know, we've done a lot of trials, and Advantech was, was also involved in uh, two Etsy POCs, and one more recent one uh, with Itri from, uh, from Taiwan, who have been working heavily from a, a research perspective uh, for operators in that area. Um, so for me, that's you know that's that's put us on the stepping stone where we have to start thinking about problems of latency uh, mm -hmm. at the edge of the network that, that we're going to need for a lot of those five G applications to, to to work. So I think MEC is 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 uh, on the path to five G and and it's it's sure. really accelerating it. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's very complementary. Um, I think that the when, when you look at, at a multi-access edge compute, I think of distributed cloud. I think of clouds and cloudlets that sit on the edge of the network. 
uh, you're, you're a common service provider, you want to maximize your service uh, return. Right? If you can do that in a distributed model on the edge of the network, it means that you can orchestrate those services in a more efficient manner. You can move services around where, wherever they're needed at any one given time, which makes for a better um, scale of economics for, for, your, for your business model. Um, that doesn't mean that hyperscale cloud computing goes away, not at all. Some functions and services will sit deep in the, in the network, in the cloud. Others are more optimized for the edge of the network, and, and multi-access edge compute um, brings the best of mobile and fixed together, right? And that's where our, our fixed um, um, ecosystem is going to be embracing 5G a lot more than maybe the previous Gs, where they see this big opportunity on the edge of the network. Okay, sorry, we're out of time. We'll talk a bit more, but Breen Madden, Paul Stevens, great to see you, and thanks both very much. Thanks a lot, Martin. Good to see you again.